ball that goes very straight also. You're just trying to keep the ball on line with good lift and turn and keep it in the pocket. Keep it in play. Yeah. Just like that. Well, that was a crushing strike on lane 15. So Berardi sets himself up for his next opportunity. Meanwhile, with a 10 pin lead, Houston steps up in the sixth. And Houston, Houston can really tighten the screws on, on Mr. Berardi right now if he throws a couple more strikes. He's found it now. He's got the dull ball working on the right lane and the shiny one working on the left lane. Two years ago, Dave Husted had an unbelievable summer tour on ESPN. Last year, not quite what he wanted, but uh, he's bounced back here in 88. This is his third telecast. You keep knocking the old adage. You keep knocking on the door often enough. Sooner or later, you're going to get in. This one to really tighten the vice. Knocked that tempo out of there. Boy, he loved this shot. He waited, though, until the last moment. Watch the six pin. Second from the right. It's going to get that 10. All right. <laughs> yes. That's as animated as you'll ever see David get. Joe's got to have a strike here. 30 pins down. Ty Brooklyn. And he got it. He's been known to do that on television. Well, there you see the little flick of the wrist, and Berardi realizes, well, I'll take a Brooklyn if I can get one. Re-rack. Watch the thumb go down at the point of release. Right over the top of the ball, and it goes to the Brooklyn, and the six pin again, or the three pin this time, gets the 6-10. Well, if he Big. strikes here, it's back to a 10 pin. I know. Match. He's got to take advantage of that break, and he knows it. I almost got a nosedive back it up. The thumb went down again. And Joey shakes his head, and I think he realizes this one might just be slipping away. Tries to stay behind this ball here. Turned a little early there. See the thumb down at, on the point release up there? And the follow through, his thumb was pointing straight down. Joe Berardi used to pressure, maximum pressure. He's already captured a Firestone Tournament of Champions, a U.S. Open, a Masters Championship. Only thing left is PBA National, and you'd have that triple crown. Only two players have been able to do that. Well, you can see that Houston's trying to bring the adrenaline and the heartbeat down a little bit. Can't get too excited out there. He's just throwing the ball super right now. Believe me, folks, you don't realize how tough they've been all week long to string strikes. And right now, Hughes said, with all the heat on, has got a five bagger. And all five have been just blistered. And it's almost a, he strikes here in its history because he's in the 240 range. He could open and still shoot 230. The best Berardi can get is 226. Deep knee bending there to get loosened up under control. He's just telling himself right now, one good shot and whatever his mental preparation is to make that shot. Oh, oh, oh. What a game. He's just been outstanding. Well, the speed, the velocity, the hit, everything there. That, that ball just flushed the minute it left his fingertips. He knew it. Look at the loft way out on the lane. Fifth arrow. Dead flush. Perfect shot. Berardi quickly steps up. Going to need another break. And this time he's not going to get it. And Joe Berardi for the first time in his illustrious career, I think, is going to end up on the short end of the stick from the top seed position. And you would have thought if he picks this spare up and marks in the 10th and shoots 2-0 that a 2-0 game would have been right in the match. 
the highest game on the television pair this evening, 209. That one authored by Ricky Corona. So you're right, that's got to be a winner, but not so because Houston could shoot 267 if he goes off the sheet. Well, Houston switching to that shiny ball in the left lane and throwing the dull ball on the right lane that he was already hitting, just a, a, a very bold move, and it's paying dividends in a first place win. His last championship, the Summer Tour 1986, the Miller Lite Challenge down in Tucson. And you go two years without a win out here, it's a long time. And, well, it's all academic at this stage for Joe Berardi. And uh, Joseph, after leading this event, uh, is going to have to head back home with a second place finish. That won't settle well with him because he, above all things, is a tremendous competitor. Yes, he is. 191 for Berardi, so Dave Houston, who really just kind of hung around all week long and did his job, continues to throw it well. The 5-7 stands, but uh, doesn't make any difference at this point. There you see the smile from Dave Houston as uh, he is now $18,000 richer, and he's collected PBA championship number six. And it's a well-deserved one, you know, in the championship round week after week, three times this summer. Finally gets that victory that he's been looking for, and he's going to be a force to be reckoned with for Bowler of the Year. So Houston and Berardi provided some excitement in the title match. The final score, 233 to 191, and he's saying, hi, Michelle, hi, Corey. I'll see you all in just a couple of minutes.